we now look at another important concept and that is conditional probability. So for events A and B, when we know that B has already occurred and now we want the probability that A occurs, it's called the conditional probability of A given B and we write it this way, probability of A with a the line there B. So the first thing here is what we are after probability of A and the thing after the line here is the given part, given that B has already occurred. So we read this as probability of A given, given B. Now, because this is still a probability, all the other rules of probability still apply. So probability of A given B must be bigger than equal to zero, it must be less than equal to one, and other ones else as well we might see later that still apply here. Now, the definition here is, that if A and B are two events such that probability of B given A is B is big, sorry. Now the definition here is if A and B are two events such that probability of B is bigger than zero, then probability of A given B is probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. So the idea here is once we know that B has occurred a can only occur where B has already occurred. So the top line is probability of A intersect B. And so if I look at this from the point of view of a Venn diagram, you'll see what it means here, that if I'm looking at now probability of A given B has occurred, then what I have here is the Venn diagram for A and B. This is A and this is B. But since B has already occurred, my sample space is restricted to this part here and in that part the only portion of that where A occurs is here which is A intersection B so probability of A given B has occurred is A intersect B this is now the restricted sample space and that's all over probability of B. This is what we're looking at now. So this is the formula and that's what it means. Here's an example of the bank data <coughs> and this has been fully worked out. So we've got here the job grade by the gender here and one thing you'll find here straight away is that if you look at the females there are more of them at the lower ends the more males, especially at the high end, see, especially this one here, 13 males versus one female. As we saw earlier, there was gender bias both in salaries but in promotions. So you can look through this example here, and I worked this out fully, and you can only need to, do, need to do this count here. So if I'm looking at the first one, probability of a male given job grades bigger than equal to five. So my sample space is this part here now, bigger than equal to five. Probably being male here is 25 over the total, which is 35. And so the other ones are similar. I'll let you again work through those yourself, and you can ask questions in labs or in lectures afterwards. Multiplication rule is the next important rule, and this is just a matter of turning around the rule from probability, that, and this is just a matter of turning around the rule for conditional probability. So we know probability of B given A was probability of A intersect B or probability of B. If I turn that around, then probability of A intersect B becomes probability of B times A given B. That's this part here, probability of well, I'm actually working it out, so probability of A intersect B is probability of A times probability of B given A or probability of B times probability of A given B. The way this works is, if I want A and B to work together or happen together, I can condition this this way. First A happens and then B happens given A has happened, or first B happens and then A happens given B has happened. So this is the multiplication rule and this is really a very useful rule. The condition here, of course, is that probability of A and probability of B must all each of them be bigger than zero. The other is, of course, I can't divide by zero here otherwise.
So that's how this works, and this is another very useful rule. Tree diagrams are very useful in solving conditional probability problems, and we should look at that in the next lecture. Bye.